Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ken. So today my topic is on uh, CSS with confidence. So uh, probably before, so going on to, let me introduce who I am first. Uh, I'm the second generation co-organizer of Copy.js <laughs> and Milo Dinosaur. So um, it's uh, Copy.js and Milo, uh, Copy.js we do it almost every monthly. It's just a, a, a mini version of Geek Branch where developers, designers come, network, chit chat, Slack, and talk up. That's Copy.js. Uh, Milo Dinosaur actually it's a um, beginner JavaScript learning um, group that I used to do back in 2016. Now, not so much because I'm uh, busy with work, but okay. So what do I do at work? Uh, I'm a web developer at Straits Times. Uh, this is our uh, revamped Straits Times website. Um, some of the daily things I do, like putting the styles, the colors, and all this, um, like making doodles for Christmas during, uh, this is, I think, 2016 Christmas with that um, different, uh, what, that jewelry blue color, whatever. Um, we also do visualization during the U.S. elections, and we also have to deal with uh, like desktop web responsive, the desktop, the mobile, you know, and yeah, these are the daily things I do every day at uh, Straits Times. So um, Straits Times, it's a website that's visited by our local Singaporeans as well as Malaysians, Indonesians, and even in the U.S. So many people are looking at what we put up every day, and because of that. We are always watchful of the things that we put up. We have to make sure that um, words are properly spelled correctly or else we'll be criticized for being um, uh, giving grammatical errors on the website. As well as design-wise, we need to make sure that it's web responsive so that and it has to you know, work play well with Internet Explorer. So yeah, these are the challenges that we do every day. We have to face every day. But sometimes, um, CSS is a very tricky thing that you will fail without you knowing. How it fails, like maybe you change the font size of, like for example, a list item. And then you didn't know that actually, well, it works for that particular thing you, 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 you got it changed, but it changed somewhere else in the other pages. So we get a horror. So the thing is, when I first joined Straits Times, understanding the, the number of viewers or readers of the website as a newcomer, I was very worried. The CSS I write will affect something that I haven't got to know as yet. So I, I, I was thinking I was getting very worried. And I, the thing about me is on my off days, during weekends, I read Twitter. Twitter is my feed for like CSS tricks and all those kinds of uh, tips and tricks on CSS, JS, things like that. And so I, I was wondering like, if there's a tool to help us. It's, it's at the back of my mind whenever I read. Until 2016, um, April 1st, April Fool's Day, okay, but it's not April Fool. Um, there was this post on automating CSS regression testing. Now I was like, whoa, okay, this seems to be something like. So I scroll down, scroll down, and I see things like that. Whoa, it's like if I were to change something, if I run through some kind of automation testing, it can actually highlight to me, oh, what has been changed? Even, I can even adjust the amount of uh, tolerance values I can, I can have. So I was like, okay. This is cool. I should try out. So okay. So let's try out lah. Okay. So um, this is what I'm going to show you demo. So don't worry. It's not just going to be a reading. Um, so let me just bring up the terminal. Okay. So over here, I've already npm in it, uh, my stuff. So um, in case, uh, so let me show you the website first. Uh. This is the website. Okay, this one, it's actually done by Qian, which is the grandmaster of Copy.js, my senior. And uh, he has this very nice website to, tell, to introduce about Asian coffee, you know, with the various like, percentages of sugar, water, milk, you know. They even has a co coffee maker or copy maker. Depending on what kind of milk you choose, what's the strength of the coffee, and how sweet it is, you know, it, 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 it gives you this long name, which I have never known, I've never ordered, because to me, right, I, oh, okay, keep life simple for me and the orderer, just coffee will do. <laughs> yeah, so, so through this, I learned so much from this uh, visualization, so I was like super captivated. And uh, so today we are using this as a uh, demo, because the thing is, let's say 
I'm brave enough to submit a PR to him, a pull request that, hey, okay, one of the things I find is, oh, the coffee cup seems to be kind of thick. Can I make it thinner? You know, like submit a pull request, something like that. You know, so, but I don't want to like change the coffee cup thickness and then affect some other CSS. So I probably could use this tool to help me, and uh, which I'll show you later. I do a more simpler one, which is like changing the font weight of the list item. So, okay, how do I do this? So this is the website. I, I clone it, I put it in my local, uh, um, local disk. And um, so, npm init is every here, everything here. So first thing is to install the package, this toolkit that runs this CSS automation test. So it's actually backstop. Uh, the GitHub it's over here, backstop uh, backstop JS, and uh, if I follow the the very simple instruction, okay npm install. I did a bit of deviation because understanding that if I globally install certain packages, I may run into a situation where I want different versions of this package for various projects. So I do a local install. So this is what I do. NPM install backstop.js. I just save dev just in case. Okay, so installing. Let's see how fast the internet connection here is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, still all right, still all right. But okay, so the thing while it's installing, I'll give you a bit of background. This was back in 2016. Um, Puppeteer wasn't around back then. Uh, what is cool about this is this uh, toolkit is actually actively being maintained. Now it actually supports Puppeteer, which is the very newly fangled JS thing which I need to learn and use. But I think it's pretty cool because back then, um, it doesn't work well. I have to use Slimer JS, which is some other JS kind of thing. Okay, that, so it's taking a while. Me, I learned through this uh, cooking master called Yen. Yen can cook, right? So I already prepared the dish beforehand. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's, he's actually here, lah. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, let me just show you the package of JSON. Okay, it's over here. Um, I also put in some uh, extra scripts. So, okay, so it's installed here, backstop.js. Um, I also put, the thing is because I do local installation, so I have to actually do this long uh, line of code to actually invoke the JS. So I actually just put it as a um, backstop P, you know, so that I can run it more easily when I do my stuff. So let's do, let's do the real thing now, which is the CSS. So, okay. Before you actually run, before you actually do your test, something you have to be uh, uh, be aware about is you have to initialize the toolkit. And when you initialize the toolkit, it will give you this uh, backstop JSON, which is basically um, like, for example, the viewports that you want to test with. So for me, the usual one is the phone, the tablet, and the desktop. You know, and um, you have to indicate which URL you want to. So for me, this is because local is a local file, so I just put it as a local file. And actually, basically, that's it. You just need these three things or two things up to you, depending on what browser you want to test on, as in browser sizes, and the URL. And that's it. Um, the rest, you can actually, on the first, on the first run, uh, because the thing about me is when I use a tool, I want to quickly see results so as to gain confidence. So. So this is actually basically all you need. I'm going to write some CSS, which um, is actually, so list item, right? So this thing, I want to make it slightly thicker. Now the, I don't know what's the font weight for this, but I just want to make it, let me see what's the font weight for this. I think it's just called normal. Yeah, not showing sure anything. It's just, I would assume it's normal font weight. So I just want to make it like font weight 500 for the fun of it. It's like 400, 500, just make it slightly thicker, make it more uh, conspicuous. Okay, let me grab my CSS, which I've prepared beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put it at the bottom, just before the you know media queries. I'm going to put it here. Okay, I'm going to save it. I'm going to refresh it. Okay. It's going to be very subtle, but try to see if there's a difference. 
Yeah, it's a bit of different. <laughs> it's a bit of difference. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, let me see. Uh, wait, I missed out one step. I, I, I got a bit overexcited to show you the thing first. Wait, wait. Let me. Um, the thing is, before you make your changes, you need to run your reference first, um, which is npm run backstop reference. Okay, basically this command, if you guys can, uh, let, me, let me just uh, bring up so everyone can see. You know. Actually, no. Uh, okay, MP run backstop reference. Okay, so it will start to create reference files. This, you, you need this first because before you can do comparison, you need a reference to begin with, and that's it. Uh, I've done the reference file. It's actually in my. Let's see, where is it? It's, it will be generated over here as a bitmap reference, uh, which is like super. It actually captures the whole page for you, for this uh, web as well as the desktop. Yeah. So this is the reference file. Now I'm going to do that um, list item thing. Okay. I'm going to save it and I'm going to. Run the test. Okay, it starts to execute. And let me see how is it going to be like. Okay, then it gives you um, what are the differences, the past ones and the failed ones. Okay, so usually we just look at where are the failures. So if you can see over here, it's pretty tiny. Uh, it actually generates out for you like where the differences is like what you saw in the slide just now you know and uh, okay cool this is what i wanted to change although this didn't get any effect so hmm, probably i need to be i need to check why why is not taking the slightly bigger font the bigger font weight but as i screw do i see any oops i see that the curly braces are also getting affected that was not what i intended you know you know and uh, the rest are fine still okay and that is not all because to be a responsible um, CSS person you need to make sure that it works well for the other screen sizes and uh, okay pretty fine it's really just the curly braces are, are just kind of um, unintended unintentionally affected so you probably your CSS need to be written such that it won't affect I'm going to show you another cool thing about this is that um, if you tap on this, okay, it actually gives you the ability to like, uh, you see this red line here, right? You can, you can show, okay, this, this is a little subtle because the brackets are very thin, but you probably can still see the difference. Yeah, then like for example here, you can, yeah. Okay, this, I think this was only available this year so this this I really love this package because this thing was only available this year when I was using it back in 2016 I don't get this kind of cool thing but I'm, I'm glad I I think it's the they are just putting two photos yeah correct, correct. yeah so so I, I guess we are all very um, excited to see this thing and try this out. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so okay, let me see. Uh, what am I supposed to cover next? I already covered reference. Yeah, okay, so now assuming, assuming I, I don't want to wreck my head because during presentation, my mind actually don't really work that well. So I just, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll just, um, let's see, I'm very, I'm, I'm happy with this thing already. So the thing is, it shows you where are the changes that you have made. If you're happy with it, all you need to do is, in a very English way, just say approve. And you just... So what the approve command uh, will do is basically you take this new set of images and uh, label it as the reference images. So that next time we make more new changes, it will actually be based on this uh, new one which I've already generated. So that's the... 
reference, test, and then approve. That's the basic workflow. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so the next thing is, um, this is really just the, the surface. If we notice that, you remember just now we were talking about this particular copy maker, which if you reload, right, okay, on, on first glance it's just copy, but how do I review, okay, just in case you haven't catched, okay, we have quite a number here, but the thing is, there are certain coffees, variations that do not appear here, but you can unlock here, which I realize is evaporated milk, stronger, sweeter, which is the kopi si tilo katai. <laughs> I have no idea how this is going to taste, but never mind. It's, it's not here, it's not here. So, so the thing is, sometimes some of the CSS we write, right, like the ho on hover, or like, um, like for example, on, when you submit a form, the success message and the failure message, it doesn't appear outright on the screen for you. So you have to simulate this kind of uh, um, user behavior and then capture the CSS that reviews itself after that user behavior. So how do you do that? So just now I was mentioning there's this thing called Puppeteer. So Puppeteer it's, uh, is, is the, the JS that you can use, is a, is a, what do you call that? It's a tool that you can use to simulate this kind of user behavior. And I'm going to show you how, which is over here, right? So you, no, you, notice, you notice that there's a lot of variables for you to configure here, but I show you just now, it's just a very simple one, this and this. But over here, there's this script thing that you can also use to uh, simulate uh, user behavior. In this case, I'm going to use the on ready. On before means um, the setting up phase. On ready is the part of the script where you will act upon the page that you are um, testing on. So in this case, I just did a very simple, um, this um, JS here um, uses um, Puppeteer. So you can see that if it's, when it's waiting for the scenario when I, so there's this scenario here, which is over, where I simulate the selecting of the various coffee variation, depending on the coffee, the milk and all this. And then I will click on the various uh, tabs. Okay, how do I know this? Let me show you this. Uh, everyone can see, right? Okay. So all this labeling thing, right, actually is very native JavaScript. Like you just um, code inspector and just uh, inspect this particular thing that you want to click on, which is over here, you know. It's, it's, it supports um, CSS3, I think. So label for, I, yeah, so not everything needs to be ID, so which is fine. So with this, right, um, if you do notice just now when I do the reference, when I run the thing, right, it actually will just screenshot for me this particular component. Okay. How, how, do I, how does it just screenshot this particular component instead of the whole page? It's also in the configuration. Okay, over here where I am looking at the selector, which is this one. Yeah, because I'm just testing on this particular um, selector. The previous one, I didn't indicate anything. So it just takes, it just screenshots the whole page for me. So yeah, that's how it works. So I know it can be a bit rushed, but do give, uh, go later I'll share with you the slide deck. You can look at the URL and go and fully, um, go and read up and what are the various configurations that you can actually play with. And also the kind of user simulated events that you can also do to make sure that your CSS works properly. Okay, let me see what else. Yeah, basically that's it actually. So, yeah, that's it. So, um, let me. See. I will just present this like last like. So yeah, whatever that is uh, just being said today uh, that I've sh uh, shared with you guys today is just the tip of the iceberg because I know there's so much more inside that you can do, which I really encourage you guys. If CSS is your daily work kind of thing, right, and you really feel that this can help you, do go read it up, and you know help yourself make your life easier so that you don't have to squint your eyes because there's uh, some kind of diff kind of engine to, to show you where's the difference. Yeah. So thank you so much.
you can uh, 